Hello everyone and welcome to another of my Total War Warhammer information videos. Today we got a lovely nice piece of information from CA narrated by Al the Hatman Bickham as he's often referred to by CA staff. This video was all about a Dwarven campaign and some of the mechanics that the dwarves have that are different from other races. The turn, the, the campaign was 29 turns in and he was doing okay but we're not really here to talk about that. The video was great for just wanting to see more footage of the game but today we're here to talk about information. Now the first thing I want to talk about which is probably the least, I'd say the least important because we've seen it before and we know it's there but I just thought it'd be really nice to sort of re-talk about it and for a few seconds is the huge garrisons. Now we've seen in the Empire campaign video the really large garrisons that the Empire could have in their capital. It's not been confirmed if it's the same for every capital of every province or if it's just your faction capital can get this huge garrison as some people speculate. And it seems to be the same here for the dwarfs. We get to see Karak Akaraz and its huge beefy garrison which with just the settlement building alone can get up to a full 20 stack. Once again it's not confirmed for every province capital that you can get this full 20 stack of elites. Not just 20 stack by the way, just of elites and 4 artillery pieces as well. It's, yeah, it's not been confirmed for every just Karak Akraz. Some people speculate that they'll get unique buildings with more garrisons, but there's no information for or against that at this time. Now, these garrisons were very big, very beefy. I think this is going to make the campaign so much harder to take lands, especially from factions like the Dwarfs who are very good on the defence and before in Total War games once you defeated their armies and you would sort of broken the back of the faction you were laughing, you were like <laughs> I'm just going to steam through, day through their land taking them all one at a time now it's going to be even once you've defeated an enemy faction and you've got them on the back foot and they have next to no armies left, they're desperately trying to recruit some over on the opposite side from you and build up a force to come over and stop you. Even in that situation, you're going to have to fight tooth and nail to take every settlement from them. The settlements are going to be very well defended compared to older Total Wars where the garrisons were basically a joke unless you're really really focused on them. And took up a, an extra slot or two in your buildings and had fully upgraded settlements and stuff like that. So, what else did I notice to do with defences and garrisons So, This I thought was really really nice. Lots of people have been speculating it for quite some time on the forum and they speculate, the speculation was that you would get a free generic lord to defend your settlement if you didn't have one to defend it. Sort of like to take the place of the general that would go into a random like garrison unit from older ones. Well this time it will be a free just random generic lord. And I thought this was really nice. A lot of people have been speculating it for quite some time because with especially with the vampire counts, it's their garrisons and all that wouldn't function without a lord. Their lord needs to empower them, give them life to fight. So, yeah, it was kind of impossible for them not to have it, but we were wondering to see if they would do it or if they'd implement a workaround or whatnot. So yeah, that was very, very nice and it's sort of been confirmed, that piece of speculation from the forum. What else did we see that I found really, really interesting? We got to actually take a look in the Damas Krom Nom Mom Ma Nom Mom Mom Okay, I'll never be able to pronounce that one word. The Damanas Nakrom. Daman D I can't even I don't even have it written in front of me, so it's how never am I gonna pronounce it? The Damas Krom? I think I got it right that time actually. We actually got to take a look in through its pages because when the dwarfs lost the settlement, 
a new grudge was written in the book. And I thought this looked very, very nice. It looks to work a lot like War Weariness from Age of Charlemagne. When you're doing well and you're scoring grudges out of the book, it'll be very low. You'll have like no penalties, even maybe a few pluses. But if you start doing really bad, you'll start losing morale, you'll start losing this and that and the next thing. People will start disliking you. So that side of it looks a lot like War Weariness from Age of Charlemagne. The other side of it looks a lot like Missions and Quests from older Total Wars, where the actual grudges themselves are Missions and Quests. For example, defeat this army that's slain 500 of your troops in an open battle, or slaughter this general who like, attacked this city and raided and pillaged it. The grudges seem very, very nice. They are generated in the campaign, which I thought was really, really nice too. And it is a nice system. We've all been going, right, we know there's going to be grudges in game. We know what was it as Thogrim to complete your campaign. You're going to need to score out all these grudges. But we're just like, what is a grudge? How do you score it out? Is it against a faction? Is it against an army? Well, now we can see, yes, it is to all those things. It's basically when a faction does something bad to you, you get a quest, and it's written in the book. Nice, nice, and it all looks really nice too. Now, there was one last thing I wanted to talk about. And this last thing I wanted to talk about is quests. Now, we knew you have quests for unlocking your legendary lord's items, like special weapons, Galmaraz for Karl Franz, Gitsnik for um, Grimgore, but we didn't really know much about them. We knew they were chains, what you had to do and accomplish certain goals, and some of them, those goals would be quest battles, where you had to go to a certain area on the map, fight a battle with your army you've currently got, and then if you win you get your reward. But we didn't know how the rest of the chains worked. We actually got to see a small sneak peek at some of the Grudge Bearers, Throgrim's, uh, quest chain. And I can't remember for what item, I think it was for his axe. And what he needed to do at that time was basically a mission from Older Total Wars once again. So both grudges and quest chain parts are going to be like missions from the Older Total Wars. Where these missions for the Book of Grudges seem to be more aggressive. Like get revenge, kill this faction for the evil they did to us. The quest chains ones seem to be more recruit a couple of these types of units, like the exact, I think it was a recruit two gyrocopters was the current like quest chain you had to do in the video. And so we can see the missions from Older Total Wars have really been incorporated to try and give us much more in-depth feel to the lore. We also got to see him click on the quest for a few seconds. And there was this tons of information just explaining why he needs to do it and what's going on. And it was really, really nice to see that much lure in the game. Which, I suppose coming from CA is not that surprising considering how much historical information they put into their historical Total Wars. If you actually go to the encyclopedia and start reading stuff, it's just really nice to see all this lure in-game from the Warhammer world. So, that is my thoughts and feelings come out out of this video information wise um, it was quite nice as I said it's really nice tidbit wise if you're planning to have a dwarf campaign and you're really eager to see them you would have loved it if you're just wanting general information in general it's really nice um, yeah hope you've all enjoyed this oh before I do go there's one last thing I want to talk about actually this is a reminder that there is now five days five one two three four five days left to enter 
my giveaway to earn a free copy of this game. Well, I'm saying there's five days. On the fifth day, you won't have a lot of time to enter because I'll be doing the actual giveaway that day. So there's four in a bit. So if you still haven't entered, you need to get your arse in gear, your rear in gear, and get over to the video. There'll be a link in the description to that video. So there we go. Hope you've all enjoyed this. See you all next time. Bye, see bye.